Bali. Sun, surf, and spirituality. It's such an Cheap shopping and cold beer. A getaway paradise is now rapidly transforming. From holiday makers to digital nomads, from hotel stays to long-term villas, thousands of them rising up and reshaping the landscape of Indonesia's most famous island. Bali is going through a building boom. You have a lot of celebrities coming to Bali. Uh, it's like the Asian Ibiza, so people love it. The natural beauty that draws millions of admirers each year has also brought cashed up foreign developers, determined to make Bali the world's playground. From extravagant mini cities... We're printing our bus stops with the 3D printer. ..to the plain absurd... There's even a jacuzzi in the cockpit. A building boom is pumping up Bali's economy, but not everyone is happy. As a Balinese, how does that make you feel? Well, they destroyed the beauty of the island. We've gotten some threats through some of the reporting that we've done. What sort of threats? Death threats. The Bali many know and love is at a construction crossroads. Can the island of the gods maintain its roots and cultural charms amid overdevelopment and under-regulation? Riding a bike along the Uluwatu coast in Bali's south quickly reveals the changing face of this island. If you haven't been to Bali for a while, it's pretty extraordinary what's going on here. Everywhere you look, it's clear this island is in the midst of an unprecedented property boom. Signs of development are everywhere. Two bedroom, two bathrooms, Looks like five new villas here. All offering dream investment opportunities. Ten, twelve, sixteen, twenty-four villas and units on this one. Every time I come back to Bali, I am just shocked by how quickly things are changing here. It kind of feels like every second person on this island is selling their lot and cashing in. Arthur Richard is the new face of the new Bali, young, European and ambitious. The 26-year-old French real estate agent has been living and selling property here for six years. As a senior sales rep for one of Bali's fastest growing property companies, the Ukrainian-owned Alex Villas. So are these the finishing touches? Yes, absolutely. Uh, now we're going to go to a townhouse, so it's a one-bedroom unit. With eight large-scale projects across the island, business has never been better. So welcome to a one-bedroom townhouse in Complex 5. Oh, wow, it's, it's very modern. It's very Instagrammable. Instagrammable? Yeah, Instagrammable. A lot of hashtag Bali, hashtag Bali real estate, hashtag Bali property. Everything has to look good on Instagram yes. for these villas. 100%. It's very important for us. If I want to buy something like this mm -hmm. in Bali, mm -hmm. roughly, how much will it cost? Um, I guess now, based on 2024, it will be around 200,000 US dollars. Uh, depends also on the quality of material. 200,000 US, US dollars. dollars? Yeah. That's all? Yeah, that's all. For a, a villa? For a townhouse like this, yeah. It doesn't sound, compared to other countries, it doesn't sound like much. No, it's not too much, right? 
Uh, that's the beauty of Bali, you can reacquire really like good properties at a reasonable price. Alex Villas doesn't just build the villas, they make everything from their own concrete to the furniture, even their own tissue boxes. You have a lot of celebrities coming to Bali. Uh, it's like the Asian Ibiza uh, at the moment. So people love it. It's the Asian Ibiza. Asian Ibiza, yeah. But the people call Bali that. I, I hear that quite a lot, <laughs> yeah. Some locals we've spoken to say that there's a land grab going on. Is, is that true? Bali will always uh, develop itself to welcome more and more tourism. We work with all the local communities, so they don't see it as a takeaway from them. They see it as, as an opportunity to develop their island. There was a time when Bali wasn't developed. In the 1960s, it was a secret spot for surfers. By 68, a new international airport was unveiled. And by the 90s, a string of five-star resorts made Bali the go-to destination. For a couple of years, COVID shut the island off from the world. Now, Bali's property market is making up for lost time. And it seems there's nothing particularly Balinese about it. One Russian developer recently put a 737 on a clifftop. If you really want to spend the big bucks in Bali, this is what you get. A private two-bedroom villa. It costs 4,000 US dollars a night. It comes with your own personal butler. Morning. Oh, this is the back of the plane, but there's nothing economy about this. You've got a shower, you've got your bath, and, of course, a pretty good view. Other developments have been accused of environmental destruction. Builders of this 116-room residence on the Uluwatu coast caused an entire limestone cliff face to collapse. They did suspend this project for a little while, but now it's full steam ahead. What is clear is that progress is outpacing infrastructure. In this part of Bali, there's no piped water or electricity. The roads here are poor, but that's not slowing demand. It's not just the main island. 40 minutes boat ride away on Noosa Panita, I'm meeting Bali's most outspoken voice against excessive development. One, two, three. Nilu Jalantic is a political rock star and Bali senator. Everybody seems to know you in Bali. Why does everybody greet you and, and take selfies with you? because they believe that I'm their hope. And people, they choose to come to me to share their sadness, to share their problems, to let me know that Bali is not all right. Nilu has long taken up the fight over the appalling roads on this island. But today, she's more worried about the coastline. This is the road going to Klinking Beach. And so siasu sayang. And this is the everyday view, as you see. Thousands of people come here to see the beauty of Klinking Beach. Klinking Beach is a mecca for Instagrammers, once voted the most beautiful beach in the world. Most tourists stay at the top. Getting down isn't easy. Yes, we need to go down that way, take a small path all the way, so... Oh, down there? Down there, so it will take maybe around 20, 30 minutes to go down. Oh, yeah.
To help get more people down to the beach, the local village has brought in a Chinese company to build this. A 182 metre high elevator and viewing platform that will soon tower over one of Indonesia's most beautiful beaches. A permanent addition to bring even more tourists to this Instagram hotspot. Some here support it because of the increased business it will bring, but not Nilu. Would you, once it's built, would you ride on the glass elevator? No, never. Never? Never. That's how strongly you feel about never. it? Never. 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 I, I, I'm, 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 I'm a very gratitude person when it comes to nature, so no. Not over my dead body, no. Nilu sees the elevator as part of a broader problem in Bali, a build at all costs mentality by the politicians in charge. It's so simple, you know, it's so simple to take care of this island, but it has been over the years and over the years, and it's getting worse. It is not getting better, you know. The rich are getting richer. My, my duty is to wake them up and to slap them in the face and to let them know you have a fucking job to do, you know. So why am I suspended in the air on a bicycle above rice paddies? Well, this tourist attraction is actually one of the best ways to see what the property boom is doing to Bali's food bowl. This is Ubud, long seen as one of the most stunning and serene parts of Bali. And it's here where the property developers are really muscling in. Ubud is rice country. The paddies here are among the most stunning sights in Bali. And for developers, they've become the number one target. Building and selling villas with uninterrupted views of rice paddies is considered the ultimate real estate prize here. How many apartments here? Uh, about 20. Do a puro? Do a puro, 20. In total, do a puro. 20 apartments. 20 apartments. Like villas? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, saya bisa masuk ke liha-liha? Bisa. Oh, okay, makasih. These villas have been built on rice paddies. The first six will open by year's end. The, the greenness of Ubud I would say like 80% is gone. Chakra Widya is a conservationist and Ubud local. He's been researching the impact development is having on Bali's precious food bowl. How much agricultural land is being lost? Through my observation, uh, the reality is minimum 1,000 hectares per year. Per year? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Mm. Turning into villas and hotels? Yes. Farmers are giving up, growing rice, very little income, and sell the land, tons of money. People are cashing in. Yes. And Chakra doesn't have to travel far to see the impact farmers cashing in is having on the landscape. 100 metres from his house is this. An entire residential estate built on land that was once rice paddies. Wow, this is quite a big site. Yeah, about 
three hectares. It's so noisy every night, man, yeah. And you're just, just there? Right there, yeah. How do you feel about this? What can I do? I mean, I've, uh, I'm not happy, of course, but there's, uh, there's nothing I can do. But everyone saying, like, how nice it was when a rice field, but it's too fucking late, man. Like, <laughs> now it's all this cement now. All the development, the influx of people from overseas, foreign investors, what does this do culturally to Bali? Uh, culturally, it will be uh, uh, basically just, uh, uh, I would say, poisoning, poisoning the culture. But that's just uh, our culture. We learn the hard way, unfortunately. Just a few kilometres away, we find father of two, I Nyoman Lasia. He farms a rice field that's been in his family for more than 300 years. Nyoman has had many offers to sell, but so far, he's holding out. Uangnya tidak ada zaman sekarang ditentukan uang nomor satu. Tak mungkin kita orang beras bicara nomor satu. Tak mungkin. Kalau begini keadaannya, generasi saya yang mau jadi terbelakang tak mungkin. Maka dia tak tahu saya. Makanya mau apa enggak tu? Apa dia mau kontrak atau tidak tahu? Yaman's latest offer came four months ago. His refusal to sell sparked a flurry of insults. Dia datang, tak mau, tak mau. Akhirnya orang hebat datang tu, lebih bisa daripada dia gitu. Bicaranya kan lebih. Akhirnya dia bicara gini. E, saya dibilang bodoh. Hampir semua orang bilang saya bodoh. Kenyataan saya memang orang bodoh, bukan orang pintar intelek. Orang pintar tu kan tak selalu benar dia. Justru orang bodoh yang bisa benar. In the future, if this area is developed into concrete villas, how will you feel? Jelas marah gitulah. Sedih perasaannya. Tradisi kita akan bergeser. Tradisi ini kental dengan tradisi sawah ini, dengan tradisi budayanya. Getting a slice of Bali isn't hard, but buying it is. With few exceptions, foreigners can't buy land here. So all these projects that are popping up, they're actually long-term leases. After three, four, maybe five decades, the land has to go back to an Indonesian owner, albeit with a block of units on it. I think some people see Bali as overdeveloped and some others say oh, it's still okay. Maybe the next future like, is gonna be really packed, but for now, like, you still have a lot of land available. In the coastal hotspot of Canggu, Arthur from Alex Villas is keen to show me their latest project. Built next to farmland, it's another big development. 89. 89, yeah. It's quite a lot. It's a lot. Pro big project. Big project, over 4,000 square metres of land in total. So it's quite big. But over there, do you know what the future will be for the neighbouring uh, farmland areas? Are they going to become villas too, or are you not sure yet? Right now, we're in a green zone from our understanding. So there is no way anything been built for now. That might change. It's not like there isn't regulation in Bali about where you can and can't build. There are designated green zones to prevent construction on agricultural land. They seem to be a bit flexible though. Sometimes local authorities are willing to rezone the green space for a building project. Other times people just start building without a permit. Late last year, Ukrainian developers, the Tayan Group, unveiled plans for a five-star development by the beach. The proposed dragon-inspired design caused outrage from those desperate to preserve Bali's traditional style. I remember seeing it was like a seven-floor building, building that looked like you were in Dubai and not in Bali. French filmmaker and longtime Bali resident, Gary Benchagib, was among the first to react. 
There was a couple of hundred-year-old trees on, on the project that they cut down. Right as the cutting was happened, we flew our drone, um, really to try to show how we're destructing our beautiful body. Gary has lived in Bali since he was nine. He's an environmental campaigner who has documented the changing landscape of Bali during his 20 years on the island. From a satellite perspective, I did some videos, and year by year you see almost like a, a virus spreading. And it's, it's shocking to see. Everybody wants a piece of paradise. Everybody wants the best view. Everybody wants uh, a river, oceanfront, rice field view. When you take videos and publish them of projects going on here, is it safe for you to do that? Um, we've gotten some threats through some of the reporting that we've done. What sort of threats? Uh, you know, like uh, death threats. And that's when you sort of slow down and realize that, um, yeah, we're, we're not in this to, to upset anyone. Development will always happen on the island, but there needs to be infrastructure, there needs to be zoning rights. It's selection season in Bali. Some politicians are proposing a temporary ban on new development in some tourist hotspots. But it's just an idea for now. Hello, Park Adi. Yes. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Bill from Foreign Correspondent. Take my sit down. Thank you. Iwayan Adi Anawa is the deputy head of Badung, the district that covers most of Bali's popular tourist regions. Korbin sis kami masih di tourism ya, tourism. Dan oleh karena itulah maka dengan tourism ini sehingga menyebabkan terjadi kunjung wisatawan yang cukup besar, cukup tinggi ke Badung, dan ini dan ini juga akan berdampak kepada pemanfaatan ruang yang sangat 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 luar biasa, dan ini juga akan memberikan dampak yang Yang ada positif, ada negatifnya. Is there a land grab going on in Bali? To have so many foreigners buying and leasing land, is it good for the Balinese? Ya, saya kira kan kembali ke begini, Pak. Kalau toh ada masyarakat yang mau datang ke Bali, ya kita kan secara prinsip tidak menolak sepanjang masyarakat wisatawan itu mengikuti ketentuan yang ada di Indonesia, kan? Apa yang harus harus diikuti, apa yang harus di, di, ditaati, di, uh, dilaksanakan, jangan sampai dia seenaknya itu. Inilah tantangan yang terberat yang harus kami lakukan ke depan, terutama dalam rangka menjaga carrying kapasitas yang sangat terbatas untuk Bali ini. What sort of punishment is there for developers that go rogue? Ya, saya kira uh, semua regulasi yang ada itu kan pasti ada uh, apa namanya punishmentnya. Ada yang 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 kita lakukan pembongkaran, tapi mungkin kalau toh ada seperti itu, kita tetap uh, melakukan pembinaan-pembinaan kepada uh, uh, masyarakat atau siapapun yang membangun yang ada pelanggaran. Tentu kita arahkan untuk melakukan perbaikan sesuai dengan izin yang ada. While villa developments are rising up throughout Bali, the really big players are now building mini cities. A few kilometres from Changu is Bali's biggest and most ambitious project, the futuristic city of Nuanu. It's the brainchild of Sergei Solonin, a 52-year-old father of six and Russian tech tycoon. Nice to meet you, Sergei. Nice to meet you too. There's a bit of a Burning Man on uh, the place. Yes. That's where the idea began, yes, at Burning yes, Man. Yes, at Burning Man. Uh, over there, you can see we, we just started to put a big 3D printer from China. So we are printing buildings also here. Yeah. And then we have a lot of saunas, different kind of saunas. So it will be like a uh, experiential park with different types of uh, treatments. Sergei is building his own 50 hectare utopia. When finished, it will feature sound healing spaces. Rest and just be yoga studios, a hotel, villas, 
and even an alpaca farm. This is pretty epic bamboo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bamboo is quite high here. So this is uh, our restaurant and beach club. Uh, I was not uh, sure to name it a beach club, actually, because we're very different from other beach clubs that you can find in Bali. And Sergei's personal favorite. You see, you can slide. It's quite fast, actually. A water slide straight into a swim up bar. I did it, of course. You I was it. the first. <laughs> Yeah, it looks a little bit quick. Yeah, it was quick. I was I was uh, thinking that it will be too slow, actually. And then when I will build it, it was very fast. Despite its size, Nuanu hasn't attracted criticism. Sergei has pledged to only build on 25% of the land, instead of the 60% he's allowed by law. How much did you invest in this project? Well, I think total investment will be around 400, 350, 400 million. Uh, but it, of course, it's not only me. There are a lot of investors. When you first told people in Bali your vision, what did they think of you and what you were trying to do? I think they were thinking that I'm crazy and still think <laughs> that I'm crazy because it's, it's a complicated project, so I think you can feel it already, right? <laughs> Something <laughs> magical happens here. And it's parties like this where the magic is on full display. A three-day festival called Suara. Oh, it's happening. Like, wow, it's happening. In just three years after, you see what's happening here. Sergei's vision for a Burning Man-style community is coming to life. And most importantly for Sergei, a change to Bali he believes is for the better get this feeling of surprise <laughs> and, uh, and and that's what I want something you will really like something you will maybe hate but I want this emotion I want I don't want you to be neutral okay but have emotion about that and uh, and surprise there are few places in the world that offer Bali's way of life it has the traditional the modern and now, the new age. But for those who have long called this island home, witnessing this change is difficult. Just how do you protect the island's heritage at a time when so many want a piece of it? I think it's very difficult to, to remain optimistic with, with how Bali is developing. I think. We're almost losing paradise every day, every second, when another tree is being cut down, when another rice field is being taken over for a concrete villa. Bali is the only place we have, you know. And, well, they destroy the beauty of the island. They, there are some other way to make, uh, to make money. But again, money offer love, right?